So I think it would help our audience to understand a little bit more what you're doing today and uh, how the process is different, the R&D, if you like, process is different than it used to be in a large company. Yeah, so, so we do semantic search technology um, by using both uh, text queries and also voice queries. And we are targeting the mobile device. So basically, uh, it's a contextual semantic search. So very important thing is where the people uh, is located, what language they speak, uh, what is the culture. Uh, we use a lot of uh, private data that, that become, we come from so typically our clients or telcos and, and the data comes from them. So you can see that we, we, we are hyper-localizing the search experience for a specific purposes of, of our clients and we build the apps uh, of, of, that do that. For example, the app will be a browser with a, a search inside, our semantic search, and they will have access to to local data, to private data of the client, and also some web data from the context that they are working with. So, so I want to emphasize that it's contextual data. For example, we, we don't know who the user is, so we, we, we are very careful with privacy, so we don't have access to the personal data of the person. But, but the interesting part is that we try to predict the intent of, the, of what the person is trying to do. This is the key for semantic search. If you predict the intent, you don't want to, to, to show 10 results. You want to search the answer of the result. So the, the goal at the end is to basically have some uh, answer for the user and then the user experience is, is much better. When, when I moved from, from basically being VP of the search uh, at Yahoo uh, to, to being CTO of intent, I think there are several changes. So, what the first change is, uh, as you said, they're going to a small company and then things become easier because basically less people, less friction, uh, you can drive better the technology, you, you decide more things in the technology, so there are less people involved. But also I moved to, the, to a C-level position, so basically I, I was able to build my own team again, but now more focused on applied research, so it was a mixture of, of people that, that like to do research with uh, many engineers, what I would call uh, R&D engineers, and, and also that being the CTO, you can take all, almost all the decisions, so, so you can drive the technology much faster. So I think this is the, the two main things, like you have less friction because the company is smaller, but also in, in a more uh, higher position, you can basically drive the whole technology. So how does the relationship between you and the people that work in the team also changes? So first, I mean, the smaller companies are much more flat than big corporations. So you are, in some sense, uh, much closer to the people. We didn't have many levels at, at Yahoo Labs. So basically, I think my distance was the same in the sense that you have managers that lead groups and then you have the researchers. So the distance is like two, is not far. But the difference now that is that you uh, went up to, to basically the, almost the first level. So, so now you only have three levels in the whole company. So, so I think a lot of the, or, or, or the key things on the research management go down from you to the, to the managers you have. So I think the key, the key thing there is the group manager. Uh, they, have people, they, they have to be people that you trust very well, that you can delegate work, that basically they are proactive, that you don't have to think what they are doing, you know that they are doing well.